Well, welcome to a very wet and not so windy Dorset Stour. This is Fruit Beat 2 run by Ringwood and District Angling Association. Um, probably in my mind, the best stretch of Chub River in the country at the moment and possibly in history. I mean, it's done more five, six and seven pound fish than most other rivers that I can remember. Yes, other rivers have done bigger fish, um, but this river here has just stood the test of time. Um, we are huddled under the brollies because quite frankly, this winter has been the wettest in history that I can remember. Um, and quite frankly, we've had to reschedule this shoot three times because the river has been well over the banks. And it is rising at the moment because start of two o'clock this morning, it's been heavy torrential rain and it's forecast to be torrential rain up until about midday today. So um, I think we are running a bit of a risk because the river is probably in as good a condition as it's been in for the last six, eight weeks, but it still isn't perfect for the chub. Little bit more water on than I would like, tiny little bit more color than I would like. <laughs> um, but if you're gonna try and catch a six pound chub, this is probably the best place to be. Um, and unfortunately, I love roving around on this river because there are lots of little pockets of chub all over the place. And you never really know where they are. Um, but whilst this rain is hammering down on us, I think the best thing to do is keep filling in this swim with the maggot feeder and sit it out. And possibly this afternoon when the rain is forecast to finish, if we haven't had any indications at all in this swim, then make a move. But for now, um, it's everything crossed. And hopefully that tip shows us a bit of a sign that there's a few chubby residents. sure it was a sign. I mean, I really want it to be a sign. So maybe I'm scratching, but. You only really know when it's, when it actually folds over. Well, um, we've been fishing about three hours now and I don't know the stout very well, but the times I have been down here, when I've dropped on them and, and thrown the maggot feeder at them, whether there's a lot of fish in front of you or not, you generally get a few feeder knocks um, and then that develops into a bite. I think I had a feeder knock maybe second or third chuck, but it, it could easily have been just a little bit of debris or something. Um, because generally, like I said, that sort of develops and with the maggot, the the interest in the feeder and the spot builds and it didn't, it sort of died off. So um, we persevered for probably as long as I want to. Um, and I've gone for a wander and I mean, this swim is a swim in the past that I've nicked a few decent fish from. Um, it's still high, it's colouring up slightly as we speak, but the truth be told is we've got a big like set of snags above us and below us and we've got a beautiful slack area with a wonderful crease pushing from right to left so it's an absolute no-brainer of a swim these are the types of swims that you need to be looking for on days like this and it's, it's almost exactly the same swim as what we just fished around there you know inside of a bend beautiful crease if the if the chub are there they should be sat just on the inside or on the crease and that's why i've got itchy feet really after three hours because i feel like if they were where we were we would have had one by now. So um, not that I want to be moving about and fishing a dozen swims today, but three hours is probably me tops because as much as, like I said, it's coloring up a little bit, it's still a good color to the water. Yes, it's a bit pacey. Yes, it's a bit iron. No, the conditions aren't brilliant, but they're as good as they have been for the last month. So I feel like if we drop on a couple of fish, we should catch them relatively quickly. So uh, I'm gonna go back and get the rest of my gear and I'm going to put the brolly up because it's still chucking it down with rain and I'm going to have a go in here. That's all you can do. There weren't no mistake in that, was there? 
There weren't no mistake in that bite. This is why I love these all-rounder rods. Oh. <laughs> They're superb. <sighs> Perfect for this. <sighs> God, that didn't take long, did it? That really didn't take long. <sighs> Said it when stood in this swim light, the conditions ain't ideal, but... But they are good enough where you feel like if you drop on them, particularly on a river like this, where there's often quite a few, you feel like you'd catch them. Well, there you go, proof's in the pudding. Oh, bless it. Cool, I'll tell you what, initially I thought that was a real good fish. It's not, it's small, but I'll take every single chub today. I've got a number of three. I thought if I can catch three chub, I've done really well, because I know the river hasn't been fishing particularly well. But, come here, you. <sighs> I'll take that every single day of the week. Took me by surprise, I had a couple of little duh, 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 at the start, literally seconds after lobbing, and by the way, I don't know if I even explained it to the camera, but for some reason I decided to go in with a little lump of cheese paste rather than the maggot feeder, just because I wanted to plop it out there for like 25, 30 minutes, just to see if there was any resident fish around. Whereas the feeder, I feel like you have to keep going to build the swim, and sometimes it can, in smaller areas like this, disturb it more than build it. And um, yeah, so anyway, I flicked out this little bit of cheese paste and had a couple little dinks straight away. I thought, probably dace or roach or something like that. And couldn't have been more than two or three minutes later and wallop straight over. Proper like, proper bite. Ain't no missing that. <laughs> and the rain stopped. It li li literally, the rain has just stopped. Beautiful. 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 Stay there, my beautiful little star chub. Oh, she's wide. Good nick, right time of year, innit, end of season. Now, right in the scissors. That's a nice chub on this cheese paste, I'll tell you that this year. There you go. My favourite fish from one of my favourite rivers, and she's not a big one, but she saved the blank. And maybe after such a quick bite, it's worth getting the maggot feeder on that spot now because if there's a few there, I don't think the cheese paste will maximise this swim, but the maggot feeder definitely will. So there we go. First one of the day. Thank you very much, darling. Made me a very happy angler. I'm not local, so when I come down here, it's nice to see the tip go over. Absolutely perfect in miniature. Three pounder. Not a monster. I'm waffling because I'm absolutely made up. Mwah. There you go. There you go, sweetie. I might be doing you an injustice calling you three pound. You're quite a thick fish. I could have swore, or I certainly would have bet a significant amount of money, at least 20p, uh, that walking into this swim and getting one within a couple of minutes on the cheese paste, flicking a few maggot feeders at them, knowing the chub like I do on this river, um, that I would have been able to build the swim and possibly have a couple more fish. Now, it's definitely interesting the maggot, but I've got a feeling that I'm getting absolutely rattled by a small fish at the moment. So I'm just going to make a slight change to my little maggot rig and generally on here what you want is a nice short hook link because the chub are not shy they come straight up to the um, to the feeder and you often get a lot of little like sort of feeder knocks before you actually see the, the tip go over. I'm getting lots of feeder knocks and the odd sort of half proper pull but I'm convinced they're actually small fish which is one of the reasons why I actually fish a rubber rather than real maggots um, when the chub actually get going and really do have a go at the feeder, a rubber maggot is just as effective as a single or a double. So I'm just going to make a slight change to the rig in that I'm taking my four inch hook link off and I'm putting one about 15, 18 inches on just to see if I can get this hook bait to sit slightly lower down the swim 
than these small fish. Um, because you can't tell me, I, I, I just refuse to believe that I've caught the only fish in this swim within two minutes. That's not going to happen. So um, exactly the same rig, two ounce feeder, was a combi feeder, but with the caps on. So yeah, it's a maggot feeder essentially. Um, just a run ring kit. And this time I've actually, on the shorter hook link, I've got a much shorter um, anti-tangle rig sleeve because I've only got a four inch hook link. I don't really, there's lots of ways of doing it down here. Um, you can fish them in line, they use elastic bands, they use um, cocktail sticks, but I tend to keep it quite simple, um, what I know. And generally I'm fishing a hook link about that long, but I've just gone to, like I said, 15, 18 inches, just to see if I can get away from the small fish that are definitely attacking the feeder and just keep that maggot or that hook bait slightly lower in the swim so that potentially if there's any chub sitting off the back of it um i can nick one i will actually have a change if this don't make any difference i will have a change and i'll go double this as well for a couple of chucks just to see um like i said you, there's no way on earth you can convince me that i've caught the only fish in this swim so thinking that there are more bites out there i think we've just got to chop and change and have a little go i will go back on the cheese paste if i have to but I've got to be honest, I really feel like that's going to come into its own in the last hour of light, first hour of darkness. But um, from my experience on here, if you're on chub, the maggot feeder is probably the best way to go about it during the day. Um, so I'm chopping and changing on the maggot feeder for now. But if I can't get away from these little ones, I suppose plan C or D would be, oh, let's put that cap in rather than on. There we go. The next plan would be to go back on the cheese paste and fish a bigger bait. But for now, that's what we're going in with. Oh, I can't even stand up. the update is I'm probably going to come off the maggot because as we speak the water is slightly colouring up and the one thing in my experience that you need for the maggot fishing to be effective on this river or most rivers in fairness is uh, you need a, a little bit of clarity and we're not chocolate and we're certainly not coffee coloured but we are colouring up as we speak and I just think it looks better for a bigger bait um, and bearing in mind we caught on cheese paste real quickly um, I'm going in with a cheese paste rig I just tied a new hook link up because actually I've had a few decent chub recently on this rig and um, <laughs> it was the same rig that I flicked out and had that one on so um, I don't want to risk having one more bite and then losing it because me hooks turned over or something but my chub rig is super super simple um, I use the run ring kit nice and simple um, I can easily change whichever lead or if you really want to sort of scale down and just bounce it around on a real slow moving swim, I just tie a little bit of stiff fluorocarbon on there and then just pinch on however many swan shots I like. Um, I think this, the way it runs up and down and the way that's constructed is super good on your line. Um, I have a quite a long sort of 12 to 15 inch hook link. That one's actually a little bit longer because I want a little bit more movement in this swim. Um, down to a size six, I ain't missing about if I'm honest, a size six all round a hook and a hair rig. Now the reason I actually have a little hair rig there, and the reason why I don't fish my cheese paste straight through, I used some of my chub rigs I like to fish like the line straight through to a hook and just put a couple of shots or do some various different bits and bobs. But when I'm cheese paste fishing, I do like the idea of balancing out your cheese paste. Um, so it just sort of wafts around. And I've definitely found that you get much more positive bites. And so all I do instead, I mean you can use foam you can use cork but i like the idea of actually having something on there if you crack off that isn't gonna sit in a fish's belly and just be toxic to it so i'll just wrap one of these little 10 mil pop-ups um white or pink they don't i mean it's irrelevant what flavor it is but i use a little pop-up stick it on the hair and then i mold a tiny little bit of cheese paste just around that so it is balanced out so it just wafts around because one thing i have found when i'm cheese paste fishing as well is a tiny little bit of movement often gets you a bite. If it's sat there dead still on the ground with like a two ounce lead or something, the fish can often sit there and look at it, but a tiny little bit of movement every now and again, just working it through the swim on the right line often gets you a bite. So um, yeah, with the extra color in the water, I think 
going over to bigger baits is, I think that's the one. It's certainly not easy. I've just had my mate Simon come round, who, uh, who's the head bailiff on here, um, with his mate Chris, who them two, bar none, know this river better than anyone else. And there's quite a lot of people on the river at the moment, and he said that there's no fish being caught. So, he's not fishing well. But we do have one trick up our sleeve. Well, not trick, but we have one ace up our sleeve, and that is dusk. And if you're on a couple of fish, which I think we are, dusk is always good for a bite. Smells amazing. Unfortunately, whatever's out there thinks the same thing, and they are tiny. I flicked this cheese paste out literally after talking to you about how I set the rig up, and um, the tip hasn't sat still for the last two minutes, and then it just went dead still after that. And I, I soon worked out what had happened. My last couple of chucks on the maggot feeder, to be fair. Um, I always fish a rubber just in case I get smashed on the real maggot that I like to fish on the hook. So I just fish a, a rubber maggot and then a real maggot on the hook. And um, the last couple of chucks, the, the real maggot started to get a bit sucked and battered. And whatever's moved in on the maggot has absolutely crucified my beautifully moulded year old soft cheese paste. Um, However, I do have another little trick up my sleeve because I do have, we are at the end of the season and the temperatures are quite mild and I do know that these, these chub don't mind a pellet um, right the way through the year. So if this is becoming a bit of a problem, which at the moment I'm thinking it is, even though I've only had one chuck on it, um, I will go over to a pellet because of the colour. I just don't think the maggot's going to work now because the colour's just getting a little bit too, um, too much. Um, but yeah, it's a, just a challenging day. <laughs> My patience and my experience and my my just me as an angler are being challenged to the uh, to the max right now. Just want one bite, one more bite from a from a proper stout chub. Five pounder, nice big fat end of season five pounder. Um, and as you can clearly see, I started off with a really nice sort of 20 pence piece, five pence piece sized lump of, lump of cheese paste. Now it's gone to 50p. <laughs> Ugh. Smells amazing. I can't, I mean, you know, I can't blame them, but I uh, just need to stick it in front of a, a Chevin. Whatever it is, I got it. Well, would you have me it? I put the 50 pence piece of uh, cheese paste on and I flicked it out and I have actually indeed caught a second chub. However, it's not the, uh, the required five pounder. <laughs> I think we'd be lucky if this one, it's too big to swing. I think we'd be lucky if this one, it's five ounces. Big old mouth on him, look. There you go, son. Well, we are into the witching hour. Uh, the small fish were a pain in the other swim, if I'm honest. Um, and I, as much as I said earlier, you know, I know these chub like a pellet. <sighs> the water's super cold at the moment, and um, I just find it really difficult to put a pellet on over a lump of cheese paste because I just know how, know how many chub I've got with cheese paste this time of year. So um, we decided to move back to uh, the first swim that we started in. <sighs> it looks right. You know, I've caught from here before. I've caught from downstream before. Um, we haven't got many options of moving around because we are in the last week of the season and it is relatively busy, but um, 
I don't know, I felt like we should have had another proper chub from the other swim and I also felt like we should have had one from here. So I'm happy to drop back in it, bearing in mind it's had a rest. No one's been in here for, no one's been in here for a couple of hours. So maybe something got on the maggots I put out earlier. You don't know. Or maybe they was in here all the time, but they just wanted a big bait just in the dark. We shall see. We've got about another hour. So if it's going to happen, if we're going to get one of these last chance saloon Dorset style chunks, it's going to have to happen here. Two hours and 42 minutes, 153 miles. That is a long way to come for a three pound chub and an eight ounce chub. But ladies and gents, I've absolutely loved it. I come this far because I know what this stretch of river has to offer. Um, this has been an absolute grueler. We threw the maggot feeders at and we threw cheese paste at them. I fished two swims I really felt like were gonna do fish and I've had fish from in the past. I fished the creases, I fished on the inside of the creases and most people on the river actually really struggled fishing swims that I was sort of fishing. Um, and I was convinced that the fish weren't actually having it until I just met Elliot and Len in the car park. And those two guys have done absolutely superb. They found the fish, they fished in the pacey water and they had three sixes and two fives today. So they only had five fish only. Um, what I'd do right now for five fish, but they had five big fish. And that's why I come all this, all this way because that's what it can offer. Um, I love chub fishing. I love chub. They've been my favorite species since day dot. I uh, just wish that they loved me the same back. So anyway. I've got to go because it's now over three hours. <laughs> the longer I leave it, the longer the journey gets. Anyway, see you next time.